In this video presentation, we present the summary of our findings on various usability studies and evaluations as part of SI622 Usability Evaluation and Needs Assessment at the University of Michigan School of Information. We focused specifically on the commenting feature within YouTube mobile apps. We explored the use of commenting as a communication tool between both users and video creators and amongst users themselves in response to the various videos shared on the YouTube platform. Particularly, we looked at what frustrations or usability issues may exist within the comment section, and we focused our evaluations on the iOS platform, and our target user audience was those users aged 18 to 34. Throughout the course of the semester, we employed a variety of methods to assess YouTube's mobile app. We began with interviews in order to gain general impressions from users and what they thought about the usability and just general thoughts on YouTube's comment feature. After completing these interviews and gaining insight, we moved on to surveys in order to address the insights that we had gained from interviews. Our surveys revealed quite a few fascinating things, but in order to really flesh out these findings and recommendations, we moved on to comparative analysis, where we inspected five different competitors to see what YouTube was doing well and what competitors may have been doing better so that we could offer suggestions for improvement. After completing our comparative analysis, we moved on to heuristic evaluation, where we utilized Nielsen's 10 recommended heuristics for usability assessment. While we did find some good findings from here, we did not want to rely solely on our thoughts because we could very well be biased having studied YouTube for so long. So after completing our heuristic evaluations, we moved on to usability testing, which was the real meat of our semester. After completing usability tests, we came up with a number of findings that confirmed our uh, thoughts from both the comparative analysis and the heuristic evaluation. After collecting and analyzing findings from each individual study, we chose four findings to focus on for this presentation. Finding number one is that reaching the comment area is inefficient. This was identified in the heuristic evaluation and the comparative analysis and also confirmed in our usability testing. As shown in our video demonstration, Reaching the comment section is not that easy. Users must scroll down with several swipes to get past all the suggested videos, and once they reach the bottom, the comment area must be expanded by tapping on the, on the comment section. Ideas for our recommendation were gathered partially during our comparative analysis. One idea that we came up with was to move the comment area to be above the recommended video section. It could still remain collapsed so as not to take up too much space initially and still have the suggested video section be visible, but would allow easier access without users having to swipe to scroll to the bottom of the page. One other solution, also used by competitors, is to have a button that would navigate directly to the comment section. This button could be located in the horizontal bar that currently contains the up and down vote buttons that would provide quick access and scroll users directly to an expanded comment section for easy access to browse and post comments. Our second finding is that people who share the videos are more likely to comment. We stumbled upon this during our surveys where we did some cross tabulation and discovered this finding. Our solution for this is to make the share button more visible. Um, currently, visibility is inconsistent, which is something that we noted both in our comparative analysis and our heuristic evaluation, and then usability confirmed. Our recommendation then is to possibly include the share button down by the like and dislike buttons, which also fits well because this is more social related features in this area. So as the share button currently stands, it is displayed on the video, but once the video starts playing, it disappears, so users have to tap or pause the video in order to see the share button. By moving the share button down next to the like and dislike buttons, it would always be visible and users would see it every time, 
we noted in our usability evaluations that users do not find the share button very quickly. Finding number three was initially identified in the course of our heuristic evaluation and was later confirmed in our usability testing. The help documentation is not as easy to find as it could be. Users must navigate through the main menu to the settings and then scroll beyond what is initially displayed on the screen in order to find the help documentation. Our recommendation would be to add another button to the main menu that's immediately visible in the sidebar when expanded that would point users to the help menu. While not many users regularly need to seek the help documentation, if they happen to have any questions about the comment feature, such as where to locate comments, how to post a comment, what options are available for Google Plus integration, finding the help documentation quickly and easily would be very important for them to accomplish those goals. Our fourth finding was that the Google Plus features as integrated with YouTube are not necessarily well known by users. For example, the ability to restrict visibility of a comment post to certain circles or friends on Google Plus, or the sharing features or tagging functions within Google Plus and YouTube are not easily known. Our recommendation for this is to offer tips or suggestions to users of the various features that they may not be aware of. This could be in the form of an email to new YouTube subscribers or as a pop-up after a subsequent login to Google Plus or YouTube following sign up to YouTube. So while we are quite pleased with the findings and recommendations that we came up with, we are going to address some limitations of our study. The first being the area of demographics. While our target audience was focused on users between the ages of 18 to 34, most of our participants, excepting our survey participants, were all in their mid to late 20s. Moreover, geographically, they pretty much all came from Ann Arbor, so we are limited in our sample there. Our second limitation is that of which platform we observed. We focused on the mobile app on iOS systems only and not on other mobile platforms and we also did not examine the website. So further research could be done into these areas to draw out subtleties and nuances that may not exist on the iOS platform.